I sure will. Hey, good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. I've been saying it like that since I got it, too. All right. I got a good one for you today. Yesterday, the other day, I was talking to you about the most effective weapon available to us as human beings, I think, is prayer. I think prayer helps us in so many ways. But right now, what I want to do is I want to show you how prayer pays off. I want, I want to show you what good it can do for you. Even me. I use it every day. And, and the days I don't use it, I feel it. The, the, you know, the days that I go, you know, without talking to him as much, I notice it. I feel it. I feel a certain kind of way. You know, the, those, uh, those, that doubt starts slipping in again. That uneasy feeling of uncertainty slips in again. That, that wondering what I'm going to do starts slipping in again. It happens to me. It happens to everybody, man, I think. I, re- I really, really do. You know, if people would just keep it real with each other. Stop being this Christian, this Superman, because you ain't. You ain't. There's a scripture that says there's none perfect. No, not one. That's everybody. That, that, that cover all of us, don't it? So sometimes I think we're a little too hard on each other uh, with that too, seeing as how we not perfect. We immediately want to just, just, oh, man, you just want to kill when we find somebody do something wrong, especially if it go public. Everything go public now called social media. But anyway... I just want to talk to you about how prayer pays off. I mean, it's called the ROI in money. People got money, call it ROI, it's a return on investment. People are always looking for a return on investment. You know, nobody, nobody in business really gives you money without understanding the return on investment. They don't even give monies to charities unless they think it can do something with the bottom line. A lot of companies work like that. I found that out myself. Sad, but it is true. So since everything is expected to work on a return on investment, I assume because we're human beings. So since we're all human beings, whether you're in business or or not, you're still in the business of living. I think when you pray, you should expect a return on your investment. You talk to him. You spent time opening up to him. You bowed your head to him. You humbled yourself. You got on your knees. I mean, but really we talking God here, so really what you're doing ain't really about nothing, be honest with you. The little bit that you do do on his behalf, it it, it just pales in comparison with what he does. But let's just say you want to call yourself invested. Well, let me show you how it pays off. This Because, see, for me, this is for me now, prayer pays off in different ways. That's what I had to learn. See, I was praying but I was asking him specifically for what I wanted. I had the audacity, though, to turn around and tell him how to do what I wanted. <laughs> That's amazing, man. I can't tell you how many blessings I blocked coming my way by putting my faith in what I said I wanted and how I wanted him to do it. I want you to give me this. I want that person to go away. I want this person to accept everything you say. Then I want to go over here and I want this deal to happen like this. And I want that person to just step aside and let let me through. And then I want that. I was, I had it mapped out. God must have been chuckling really hard. (laughs) He had to be going, boy, I made you to be funny, but boy, you funny now. So you're going to tell me how to do it. And you've all heard this right here. If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plan. Well, that's what I did. And that's how we pray a lot of times. We pray. And we pray in the prayer, we're telling him how to work it out. Well, here's the deal. This is what I've learned. Prayer pays off in different ways. There's a different return of my investment when I pray. See, sometimes when I'm praying for something, a situation to dissolve itself or go away, sometimes I get courage out of the prayer. Prayer provides me courage. That's just to go on and look at it, I guess. Face it. Then sometimes when I'm praying about a situation, sometimes prayer gives me hanging power. Sometimes, man, it just I look up and I'm just handling it better. Sometimes prayer gives you laugh it off power. Sometimes, man, you just got to laugh it off. 
<laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> you tripping. Do you know what that is if you could do that? You know, it, it, sometimes it gives it gives you a show of strength, power. Sometimes prayer allows you to have the appearance that you got it all together. Nobody got to know the whirlwind, the, the tornado, the hurricane that's swirling in your life. You standing over there like the eye of the hurricane. You just And it's all swirling around you, but you standing there like the eye. You just as calm. That's what prayer does. So when you pray, man, it builds up a lot of things in you. You know what it's done for me? Prayer has built up character in me. It's made me have more character because I'm able to stand stronger on the things I say because I've been praying, because I've been asking God for all of those return of investments. I've been asking God for courage. I've been asking God for hanging that power. I've been asking him to give me the power to walk away. I've asked him to give me ignored power. I've asked him to help me laugh it off. I've asked him to show me strength. But you know what I was doing? I was really praying, not really for them things, be real with you. I was asking him to help me. Lord, help me. You ever done that? You ever ask God for help? And then all of a sudden a list of these things show up? See, sometimes how you want the problem to be solved ain't the best way. There's a lesson to be learned when we make mistakes. And sometimes you got to stay in that fire and you got to learn that lesson. But guess what, though? When you come out of it, you're going to be better for it. You're going to know more about it. Come on, y'all, pray. He's solid. His word is true. It lasts forever. He do what he say he's going to do now. All day, all night, 24-7. He do it all day, all night, and then some more. His word don't ever change. It's true. It works for me. It worked for you. It worked for Jakes. It worked for Osteen. It worked for Kirk Franklin. It worked for Paula White. It worked for Billy Graham. It worked for Mother Teresa. It worked for Gandhi. It worked for princes, Arabs. It worked, man. It worked for you. What you waiting for? Why don't you put prayer in your game? Watch what happened to you. You sitting in that jail cell and you struggling with it and they telling you blood in, blood out, you can't get in. You That's foolishness, man. What you mean? God can get you out of anything. Look, man, if you done read your Bible, he done got some people out of some sticky situations. I don't know what you're talking about. If Daniel was in the lion's den and Jonah was in the belly of the whale, what you talking about? Where you at? You just sitting in a cell with some dudes around you talking about what they going to do. Man, you got to be real. God can't nothing do nothing. Nobody do, can't nobody do nothing to you. God won't give you the strength to handle. Prayer changes things, man. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, people from around the world, any way you listen to the baddest morning show on planet Earth, none greater, I'm telling you, add them up, they ain't there. It's Steve Harvey Morning Show. We open our show with gratitude, grateful for all he has done. That affects your attitude and allows you to project things to come which is in direct correlation with your altitude, which, oh, Lord, puts us all on the run. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Steve Harvey Morning Show starring Shirley Strawberry Carla Pharrell, the mouth of the South, the Mississippi girl, Monica Jr., a government named Kill Spates, and the legend <laughs> of nephew Tommy. <laughs> what is it, yes, uh, Junior? Hey, hey uh, let's talk about it, man. Saw something this weekend you did, man. You was talking about jumping. You wrote a book called Jump, matter of fact. And it just hit me. You know, after my birthday and everything, it hit me. Jumping is not a one-time process. Jumping is multiple times in everything. Like, you, we have to jump consistently. Is that, is, that, is that how I'm looking at it? Am I looking at it wrong? Well... You know, uh, uh, the purpose for the book Jump was to to inspire people to take the initial jump. It's the initial jump that's the most difficult one. Mm. Once you understand that mm-hmm. the jump is to take risk, there is no living without risk. Mm. You, it, you can exist and play it safe, but if you want to live, you have to take risk. 
And it's very difficult to get a person to take the initial jump because it's a leap into the unknown. But once you take the first leap, the first jump, you get better at jumping. It's never easy to jump. Right. Because every time you jump, it's still a jump into the unknown. But after you take the first jump, it should instill in you a level of faith in God Almighty that he will keep you no matter what the results of the jump. Because the jump is going to come with some with some, with some tears and some cuts and some bruises and some stumbling. And it, it's just not jumping all of a sudden, whoosh, parachute open and you sail. <laughs> No, no, the jump comes with some, oh, you didn't know that ledge. Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't know that ledge was out there that far. Mm -hmm. You didn't know it was branches on the way down. You didn't know, you didn't know that that cushion at the bottom really what, that somebody moved it. Oh, no. Ouch, ouch. So every jump doesn't result in success. Summer jumps result in experience that mm. gives you the experience, the wherewithal, and the understanding that when you have to jump again. But it's the lack of jumping that stops people from succeeding. Yes, sir. That was the purpose of the book, Jump. Yes, Go sir. ahead and jump. We got to jump. All right. Lord have mercy. Yes, All right. Thank you. Uh, coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, it is Monday. So you know what that means. The pastors are in the building with church complaints right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. It is time for church complaints with <laughs> Pastor Motown and Deacon Def Jam on this Monday. We gather in a most procurious way. Yeah. We all facilitate the preparedness of our, as we pomphonate on the words that is about to flow. Yeah. Let us reconcile with all that is to come. <laughs> Preach, boy. Preach. In his name, amen, amen. Come on, amen. deep into complaints. All right, Pastor, let's get down to it. Uh, Naked and Afraid TV show called and asked if the church would like to participate in their new concept, Blessed, Naked, and Saved. Uh, they drop the entire congregation in the woods, and we compete against another church. Uh, whoever has the most people at the end wins $100,000. So uh, do we want to participate in Blessed, Naked, and Saved? <laughs> well, no, but I will allow them to bring cameras to our church, which is loaded, located on 105th and Massey between mm -hmm. Park and St. Clair. That's right. And you can come and film our service every morning, which is dead in the heart of the hood. And the name of our show is Clothed mm -hmm. and Scared. <laughs> Clothed and Scared. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Come on up Whoa. in here. A survival I, story. Pastor. I church dead <laughs> off in the hood. <laughs> they got something for you on the way in and on the way out. Yeah. Mm. Good mm. God Almighty. Well, we're going to go ahead. Uh, the pet ministry is asking for the uh, for their church services to be led by Snoop Dogg because Brother <laughs> Vernon Lane really? isn't a good fit. The pets aren't feeling him are his message. So all the dogs in the in the pet ministry, they are not feeling uh, Brother Vernon Lane. They're asking if uh, Snoop Dogg could come preach the word. To, I don't uh, know if the pets is aware of the cost of Snoop Dogg. So you go back to the pet ministry and tell them that if they continue with these complaints, it's back, oh, back, oh, back to the shelter they go. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, Lord, Pastor, I didn't know you were going to send them back to the shelter. Oh, that's where they come from. <laughs> yeah. What you ain't finna do is come up here and cost us more. <laughs> now, you, you you ordering famous dogs, Snoop Dogg, all this here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Atomic you know. dog. Amen, Pastor. Talking about, can y'all have George Clinton <laughs> yeah. come perform Atomic Dog Live? No, he not. Matter of fact, George Clinton is, was at the conclave. Yeah. <laughs> for the cube this year. 
Oh, <laughs> what a glorious time. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. Go ahead. All right. All right. Uh, the fish fry was amazing on Friday, Pastor. We sold 150 dinners and raised over $2,000. Now, here is the problem. The, the fish tank that's in the wall when you first come into church had at least 40-something fish in it. Goldfish, Oscars, uh -oh. gus, guppies, angelfish, blowfish. All of them are gone. <laughs> Earl that fried the fish on Friday is nowhere to be found. Please, <laughs> please tell us this is just a coincidence, Pat. Please tell us this. Well, uh, oh, that's I'm going to have to come mm -hmm. to the Lord. Uh, Drawed already drawed conclusion <laughs> that Earl done something with the fish that was in the tank. The fish is going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, mm -hmm. I did notice mm. on one of my sandwiches, <laughs> oh, one of my sandwiches, I had asked for a six inch sub fish sandwich. Mm -hmm. And wow. my sandwich had exactly 25 fish on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They was delicious, and I couldn't see the oh, color because of the batter, but I'm thinking now that you said that, them was probably goldfish. Gold? Oh, my God. <laughs> you oh, ate the wow. goldfish? That's terrible. Well, they had so much slaw on it, I couldn't <laughs> see them, but now that you mentioned <laughs> the fact that they gold. Mm. <laughs> Faster. Yo, goldfish, aquarium. you put the right batter on them and, you know, get some hot sauce and some slaw. <laughs> And that put them on that brioche bread. <laughs> That's some good eating. Not boy, brioche. boy. That's brioche bread. Not brioche. Boy. You know, I just discovered that later on in life. They didn't have that when I was coming up. Right. right. It's so white we ate bread, everything on bread. biscuits and light bread, uh -huh. Wonder Bread, Meal Brooks, uh -huh. you know, right, right. stuff like that there. But boy, <laughs> they done came up with this new bread that white folk make over in France somewhere, mm. or Italia, or something like that there. And it's mm -hmm. called brioche. Mm -hmm. Lord, you, you ain't had none. You got to get some. That's, you you get ain't living You brioche bread and try that Hawaiian loaf. That's oh, two yeah. breads that they uh -huh. kept away from us. A bait? <laughs> now, they ain't good at Grandma Biscuit, but they damn show right up there, though. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, goldfish on that, huh? Fried goldfish on brioche. All right, Pastor. Let's get keep it moving here. Listen, I, Sister Gretchen Davis has decided to get rid of her TV that she has had since 1975. Uh, she says she needs at least eight brothers from the church to help her move it out the house. No brothers are willing to help because every TV back then is at least a thousand pounds. And, uh, you know, it's the whole console, Pastor. Yes. I've been by there. That's a flow model. She got it's a flow model with an attached stereo system. Ooh. It's a whole thing. It's got a, it, it was nice back in the day. It's got a little color panel on it that light up to the music. And it's got an eight track system on it and an album player, photograph. Nice. Good Lord, that thing is heavy. And on top of it, it has pastor. a bookshelf built on it, made out of solid oak. That ain't vanilla. She got that go. good one down there. They had that one at Sears. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO. Circuit the City Mama. had one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That thing was something else. Boy. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, there was a big family feud at Disney World. Uh, 76 year old oh. father of, yeah, that was a brawl. What's going on at Disney? I don't know. Uh, and the, <laughs> a, a 76, the 76 year old father of Elon Musk wants to donate his sperm. Mm. And uh, our forever first lady has a brand new book. We'll talk about all these, like I said, at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building. Ready for your love questions. Julie in Nashville writes, I'm a 50-year-old married woman, and our son is leaving for college next month. My husband didn't go to college, so he low-key hates on my son for getting accepted to a top school uh, for computer science. I want to do a small send-off for my son, and my husband is fighting me on it. Should I plan the party anyway? Yes. Wow. You're hating on yes. yours. Come yes. on. Yes. 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 You should celebrate your child. 
Yeah. That's a major accomplishment. And the daddy, you just dumb. What's wrong with you, dog? <laughs> Hating on him because he got accepted. That's, a, that's come from good parenting. Yes. Oh, obviously it was on her part because you wouldn't obviously <laughs> contributed to this high education. You're but a what, hater. You know, what happened to the wanting a better life for your children and the world? Mm-hmm. Come on, bro. Man. You need to pick yeah, up the don't pace. Don't be a man. loser. Stop. Mm-hmm. You got to be kidding me, man. Your son got yeah. a chance to really turn himself into something if you allow yeah, it. Yeah, he got accepted. Don't to get a top in the way. You're and right. don't let your son feel that, man. No, don't be. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're right. So you're saying yeah. give him the party anyway. That's right. All right. This one's from Miracle in Illinois. Miracle says my old classmate offered to take me to work so he and I can split the gas. We both work downtown, so it makes a lot of sense. But he has a girlfriend. I want to let her know I'll be riding with him. He says he doesn't have to. I would want to know if he was my man. Should I ride with him and let him deal with it? Let him deal with it? (laughs) See, Miracle, you know, see, I I don't even think this letter should have been written in because there's something behind this that you're not sharing with him. See, you would want, he has a girlfriend. Now, Now, you fit. No, mm-hmm. she's not 50. Julie was 50. No, 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 she's not son. 50. No, yeah. You, Miracle, come on now. Y'all riding downtown together to split the gas. If that's it, then that's it. That's it. But you want her to know. So what you finna call her and tell her? <laughs> she don't want You just problem. let him deal with it. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, yeah. if I, I would want to know. Well, maybe you ain't her. And he don't <laughs> want her to know. Because he want to holler at you while y'all on the way down to work. Mm -hmm. Now, you already know that's what this is. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't that good at damn co-workers. Stop and split the damn gas. Drive your own car. Man, whatever, lady. (laughs) If you worried about all that, don't go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Drive your own. That's right. I promise you he ain't got you up in that car just because y'all cool. Mm. Man, stop. All right. Okay, Miracle. You got that, didn't you? Here we go. Trinice in Inglewood says, I'm 29 years old and my mother's man of the month is only 37. He used to talk to one of my friends and I let him know that I knew. He ghosted my mom since then. Should I tell my mom what I did or let her move on to yet another man? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just go on and tell her if he done ghosted her. Mm -hmm. Hey, mom, I just want you to know that I told him that I knew him. He's 37. He dated one of my friends. I reminded him of that, and now he don't want to see you no more. That's why he ain't see you. Yeah. yeah, why not tell him? Or you ain't got to say nothing. He done ghosted yeah. him. It's over. She's, she's probably afraid that the mom will be mad at her. Well, then don't her. tell her. Y'all, she, y'all talk she, too much. <laughs> <laughs> we, we like to confess. Yeah, all this here. You know, should I tell him, her girlfriend, we riding to work together. Should I tell my mama that her man of the month used to date one of my... Uh, Shut up. <laughs> we like to get it off of us. Man, y'all, but y'all talk too mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. Be quiet some damn time. <laughs> man, everything right. ain't got to be a problem. Quit making mm-hmm. it a problem. Yeah. Shut up. And her mama's going to have a new man anyway next month. She gets one every month, she says. So. Shut up. <laughs> man. You're You sound like Raymond in the closet, one of Tommy's pranks. (laughs) All right, last one, Steve. AF in uh, West Philly says a close friend moved to town. (laughs) Right. That's the name. (laughs) I know, I know, I know. AF in West Philly says a close friend moved to town three months ago, so I introduced her to my friends. We always plan to hang out, but um, she is always busy for me. Too busy for me. I heard she went to brunch with my friends and I wasn't invited. Should I act unbothered or confront them all? Wow. Dog, what? Now, is this a man that wrote this letter? Um, it sounds like a woman, Steve. I think I, they went but, to brunch and stuff. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like a woman, but the initials are AF. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for well, that. Well, see, <laughs> that's probably what you are, though. What? What? Crazy. <laughs> so then they found a way to not have to deal with you at the brunch. <laughs> I don't I don't see what confronting all of them is. Once again. Once again. Shut up. 
We got but, three letters in a row, but nothing, Shirley. You know she's hurt. Shirley, I'm the CLO. I'm the CLO. And I say, so damn what? Your feelings is hurt. Steve. Your friend came to town. You introduced your friend to all your friends. They did all with the brunch and they told you. Yeah, so she's yeah. hurt that she was left it. out. And so these are her friends. she confront mm-hmm. all her friends yeah. and find out you, she hurt friend. now. Now, <laughs> when you find hurt. out them ain't your friends, <laughs> yeah, here comes some friends. more hurt. Yeah. Uh-huh. Play it off. Act like you didn't know. Mm. Like she's unbothered. On the bottom. Yeah, and just go on and quit making an issue because it ain't going to do nothing but be on the You're not going to be friends with her. Mm-mm, mm-mm. She stole her friends. <laughs> she ain't going to let it go, Steve. I'm telling uh-uh. you now. She ain't going to let I it go. I know she's not. Uh-uh. That's why I keep saying <laughs> We as uh-huh. women. Y'all talk too much. <laughs> she's not going to let it go. Everything don't need closure. <laughs> Some stuff is closed. <laughs> what, is, what is, see, closure is two words. Closure. So now, Wait, once what? it's, it's cl- closed, it's, uh-huh. it's two words. Closed, yes. once it uh-huh. gets closed, why do you have to be sure? <laughs> <laughs> why? What is the I got to be sure? <laughs> it's closure. Mm-hmm. It's closed. Stop mm-hmm. worrying about the other end of it. I got to be sure. It's closed. <laughs> All right. Be so quiet. women. I know y'all don't know how to do this. You're saying more women need to learn the art of closure and to move on. No. Or uh, accept the actions accept, that it is uh-huh. And just go uh-huh. to the next move because it's going to be uh-huh. some more moves. Okay. Y'all keep All letting right. these moves pile up. Let mm. that go. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, CLO. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. President Biden tested positive for COVID last uh, Thursday and then... Re- yeah. Man, he needs some good news. He needs to hear him just mm-hmm. some good yeah. Ain't none. Well, then he released a video on Twitter uh, to say that he is doing well and that he was continuing to work while in isolation at the White House. Uh, the good news is that Biden is fully vaccinated and twice boosted, and he is taking a Paxlovid, uh, the antiviral drug. So there you go. And of well course, we soon, wish him Mr. well. President. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, we wish him well. Mm-hmm. Hey, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> He's good, huh? Yeah. It didn't do nothing to Trump. We sure hope it don't do nothing to you. Right, right, <laughs> right. And this is unbelievable. Um, how can you be upset at Disney? Okay, Disney World, th- that's the happiest place on earth, right? Right, right. Uh, you would think. Uh, well, two families got into a fight while in line at Disney's Magic Kingdom. One family member got out of line to go get her cell phone from a scooter. And when she tried to rejoin her group, another family that was in line wasn't having it. The other family tried to stop the female from getting in line with her family. And they started yelling and cursing at each other. This led to a huge fight among almost at at least 10 people. And of course, bystanders recorded the fight and you can see the children on the video crying. So Disney's security uh, team broke them up. They broke the fight up, took everyone to the security office. This was crazy. Now ain't nobody on the ride. What nationality is these people? You can tell by the sign. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. It was was us. (laughs) But let me tell you you something, though. If if one person gets out of line and comes back to get in the line, Uh it don't affect you. She with their family. The if they family. say she with us, mm-hmm. come on, man. Mm-hmm. What difference do that one damn person make? Yeah. That don't put you in line for another hour. Yeah. yeah. You ain't in line for another 15. It's mm-hmm. one person. Yeah. The All they had to do was just let the woman, like you say, just get back in line with her family. That was it. It wouldn't affect you, like you said. That was Now, y'all at the security up. office ain't nobody on the ride now. And the babies are crying and upset. Yeah. But you know what you it know? is? They hot. They outside. It's hot. They standing it's, in line, right. a long line. Mm-hmm. You, you done got out of line to scoot back up and you, you with that scooter trying it's to get heat. through. And they like, uh-uh. <laughs> this heat. <laughs> that was, it, 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 yeah. At night That's again. sad. 
it, it really is. And you're at Disney World. Come on, people. Come on. But the kids, right. no, y'all finna, we ain't finna get on a ride. Right. <laughs> Mama, <laughs> we're not stopping. They gonna come <laughs> pull us out the line. For the babies. Mama, here comes security. Would y'all stop for they take us out this line? I don't want to see Mickey Mouse. Shut up, Junior. <laughs> but Mama, they going to take us out the line. Click, click. Oh, we out the line. <laughs> yeah. Now you're in the security office line. Yeah. They got cameras. Now you out the park. Family got to leave the park. And the babies man. didn't get to ride, like you said. They ain't uh, seen look- Mickey Mouse yet. They ain't been up to the castle. <laughs> Bippity bop. Oh, <laughs> man, I, ain't I can see fruit. if y'all whooped a Sesame Street person ass. I can see if it was that. <laughs> this is ridiculous. The, the racial stuff, right? That uh-huh. Yeah, I can <laughs> see that. <laughs> right. But this. All right, moving on to Elon Musk's 76-year-old dad. His name is Errol. Well, Errol Musk has re- revealed that he's looking forward to having more children. Again, he's 76 years old. This comes after he just welcomed his second child with his former stepdaughter, oh, Jana. Wait, yeah, what? yeah, yeah, yeah. What? I, I did not stutter. You heard me. He had a relationship with his stepdaughter, who's grown now. She's grown now. They have two children together. That's nasty. Um, <laughs> nah. <laughs> Uh, now, Errol is claiming that his sperm is highly sought after in Colombia. He said a South American company wants to donate his sperm to, quote unquote, high class women. These women had hoped to get pregnant by his son, Elon, but changed their minds once they realized that they could have his sperm instead, the daddy's sperm instead. So the question is, who wants a 76 year old man's sperm? And is he a billionaire like Elon? I, I think he's a millionaire, a couple of million dollars. No, but dollars it's a possibility that your baby gonna look like Benjamin <laughs> the Button. The DNA. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna come out. Come out Say it like again, Benjamin Steve. Button. There's what? a strong possibility that your baby could come out looking like Benjamin Butts. Benjamin Buttons. <laughs> Buttons. What? Buttons. This, this baby's so damn old. <laughs> There's all kinds of things wrong with that story. (laughs) Yeah. He need a Disney ass whooping. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I think think that's the tone of the day. Finally, (laughs) our forever first lady, Michelle Obama, has revealed that she will release her second book in November. The new book is titled The Light We Carry, Overcoming in Uncertain Times. And our forever first lady stated that the book offers readers a series of stories and insightful reflections on change, challenge, and power. She is drawing from her experiences as a mother, as a daughter, as a spouse, as a friend, and as first lady. So there you go. That's I'm coming up in book, November. Uh, mm-hmm. For the other people. Her books is always enlightening and take the high road. Very insightful, mm-hmm. wonderful story. So I'm gonna release a book out with the title. Title of my new book is gonna be "You Ain't Got to Take It No More." Mm. <laughs> what's What's it about? You ain't got to take it no more. It's, it's, it's and all I'm gonna have is stories of people just hitting eight chapters. Whoa. Is today wasn't the day? <laughs> <laughs> you picked the wrong one. <laughs> I All right, told coming, you. coming up in 20 up. minutes after the hour. <laughs> anyone care to be ethically non monogamous? Ethically non monogamous. <laughs> it's really popular these days. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so there's an all new dating term that's really popular on many dating apps right now. It's called ethical non monogamy. It is the practice of having a close or sexual relationship where both parties consent to infidelity. Uh, uh, in that's other words- That's out, that's called yes. swingers. That's not a, that's not a new term. <laughs> that's Jeez. called swingers. Yeah, uh, fair. But, but go ahead, yeah. though. Okay, in other words, I tell you I'm married and you agree to sleep with me anyway. That's basically what it is. It's just, <laughs> just cheating, okay? Well, that's swinging, just cheating. Yeah, swinging, just cheating. yeah. Open relationships and polyamory all fall under the umbrella of ethical non-monogamy. People are embracing this concept so much that it's now something you put in your dating profile to let people know what you're into. 
in a 2020 YouGov poll of U.S. adults, a third of the people surveyed chose ethical non-monogamy. Millennials were the most likely to choose this type of relationship. It's called cheating. It's been out. Oh, yes, it's just cheating. But when your yeah. wife see your profile, though. <laughs> What is it going to say, Steve? Oh. <laughs> you want that Ooh. cheese and Steve? <laughs> you better hear him get that. T- you you going to have to take that down. <laughs> <laughs> when your partner find out, you're going to have to take uh-huh. that down. Well, because you ain't got word? to do that. Why is ethical attached? I guess because you disclosed it. I'm married up front. I don't know. How that I'm is. trying to figure out who don't know I ain't married. <laughs> well, you're you're famous, so that's a little different. Everybody I'm just knows you. Here going. Ladies, I just this want to put it out there. I want uh-huh. be uh-huh. into more uh, ethical or uh, non-monogamous <laughs> relationships. That same profile of being in my obituary. <laughs> <laughs> The exact same profile. Okay. Here lies Mr. Consensual Non-Ethical. Well, <laughs> yeah. Ethical Non-Monogamy. Monogamous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. That's what he Who was into while he was folks? alive. I don't know. That's crazy. That is crazy. Well, it's, it's on a, a dating app. But I think people involved. think if they, if they if they if they put a, a a cuter term to it or a, a nicer term or a sexier term, they change the name of it. It makes yeah. it better. It's it, like it consent. It's like consensual co-parenting. Yeah, with Van Jones. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Van right. Jones. Yes. Well, I didn't know it was Van Jones, but I was just baby mama, baby, baby daddy. daddy, baby yeah. daddy, That's baby the mama, term. baby daddy. Yeah. That's what that All is. right. Yeah. Coming up next, guess who is here, guys? Roscoe's in the building. A lot what? of new albums have Wait been released. Yeah, yeah, he's here. He's here. He wants to clear some things up. All right, Roscoe, okay. when we come back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So Roscoe is in the building. He's here. Uh, welcome back, Roscoe. I ain't got a lot of time, baby. Dude. Come on, what, what, what <laughs> going right. on there? Why was it early? Oh, hey, Roscoe. What's up, Carly? What's going on there? Hey, hey Mrs. Roscoe. Monica. What's going yeah. on with you? Where's Roscoe, my <laughs> hero, boy. What up, my dog, Tommy? What's going on with you? That's my dog. <laughs> I know it is. What's going on? What y'all need from me? Glad well, y'all haven't come here. Go here with me in a while. Yeah, what, yeah, it has, Roscoe. I, I, think, I, think I said it's been a while. It's oh. been a while, yeah. Oh, that you hanging out so, yeah. where, A lot where, of new where, albums where, coming where, out. Yeah, Drake lot of been, yeah, Drake, Drake's album is out. Lizzo was here last week. Neil was here last week talking about their new albums. Beyonce's new album comes out this week. So One at a heard... time, baby, one at a time. Go ahead. Which one <laughs> you want me to talk about first? <laughs> Well, I just want to know, have you heard any, have you heard Drake's music, for instance? Oh, hell yeah, I heard it. What, what do you mean I heard it? <laughs> well, what did you How know? the hell I ain't going to hear I wrote it. <laughs> you wrote Drake's album. <laughs> you need to really stop. You need huh. to really stop. Drake, Drake wouldn't be known without me. <laughs> oh, I didn't know what? you knew Drake. <laughs> Drake wouldn't be nothing but I, been knowing Drake. Knew Drake when he was a little baby. Did you yeah. know his, his, his real name ain't Drake. His real name named Draymond. Draymond. <laughs> <laughs> but that ain't look good in no. It ain't no hip hop name, so we had to change it. Change well, it to Drake. Well, what about uh, Lizzo? Did you know Lizzo? Did you know Lizzo? Oh, I know. I love Lizzo. I love. Yeah. Lizzo. I know Lizzo Mama. Oh uh-huh. yeah. What was her name? Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. see, see how see, see how they try to stay close. They try to stay close. You know when you had a name, then you want to have a little hip hop name. And she, Elizabeth don't sound good, so now she just Lizzo. You know. Uh-huh. Did you know uh-huh. Drake's real name is Aubrey? Did you know? Uh-huh. That? No, no, really? it's Draymond Aubrey. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> it's Draymond Aubrey. See, I know all this is made y'all don't know nothing about. Yeah. Tell a minute to win it, you know what I'm saying? And then there, of course, there's Neo who was on the show with us just a few days ago. And um, he he said, Yeah, Neo, I know his daddy too. Mm. Oh, what's his daddy? What's his name? Leon. (laughs) Because you know Neo's first name is Schaefer. Right. No, but hold up now. See, listen. Neo, that's Leon inverted. Mm. Oh. That's all that is. Oh. 
<laughs> all the same that you see all that Neo Leon. See how uh-huh. that? Now, uh-huh. what you say his other name is? Schaefer. Schaefer. See, can't nobody name you. Can't have no cool ass hip hop career and your name Schaefer. Now you just a, you just a fool. MC Schaefer. You can't come out there with that. You can't come out there talking. About, I'm a Schaefer. I'm a Schaefer dish. Brought to you by Schaefer Foods. It ain't all sound good. Nothing sound. like that sound good. <laughs> Who else Beyonce, out there, baby girl? Yeah, and then Beyonce releases her album, Renaissance. Oh, yeah, I know, I know her daddy, too. Well, we all do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. know him. <laughs> yeah, he got famous. So yeah. you heard Break My Soul? You've heard Break My Soul? You can't break my soul. Sing it, Rock. You can't break my soul. <laughs> Yeah, but well, see, she took that and she changed that, cause I had oh, yeah, I had wrote it different. Oh, what you can't right? break me down. Mm-hmm. You can't break me down. Mm-hmm. Ain't no breaking me down. <laughs> you can't break me down. Uh-huh. Ain't no breaking me down. Mm. And Beyonce got a hold to it and said, "You can't break my soul." Oh. And I ain't I ain't like that at first. Uh-huh. At first, mm. you weren't feeling it. Right. Uh-huh. But then I went on and let her do it, you know, because she's so gifted. <laughs> wow. We was in the I studio, and she just kept saying soul. I said, what the hell is she can't understand? Bring me down. What she can't break my soul? She had took were... it and worked on it. Excuse me. Uh-huh. Excuse me. Uh-huh. I have a question. You were in Beyonce's recording session. Is Beyonce was in my recording session. <laughs> <laughs> I tapped right. Jay-Z. I right. tapped Jay-Z. I said, I said, you know about this here change? <laughs> Because clearly I said you can't break me down. Well, Rocco, Why? I'm, get, I'm, get your girl now. Yeah. <laughs> he, I'm he always said glad Rocco. When you, he said he's a Rocco. Give her a chance. Mm-hmm. She knows what she's doing. Give her a chance. Yeah. Up. yeah. So yeah. I, I let her go ahead. It turned out pretty good, though. You let her live. Thank you, You can't Rocco. break my soul. <laughs> Coming up next is the nephew with the prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, he got fired and I'm under new management. Mm, We'll find out what that's all about in just a bit. But uh, (laughs) wait till you hear this. But right now, it is time for the nephew and today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nev? Well, you know, it's bright and early Monday morning. Mm -hmm. Time to be stupid, time to be ignorant. What Uh better way to do it? Then to talk about your kids. You know what I'm oh. saying? That that does it, don't it? Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, baby wait. What is it? Baby wait. It was just wait. <laughs> yeah. Just I'm wait. like, oh. <laughs> okay. I said it, Carl. I said so baby so wait. So you wait. say. <laughs> Let me do my exercise real quick. I'm supposed to do them every morning. Okay, go ahead. Whether the weather be cold. <laughs> <laughs> Or oh, whether the cause. weather be hot, <laughs> whatever the weather, we in this together, whether we like it or not. You failed again. <laughs> it's hot right now. <laughs> One more time. Come on. Whether the weather be cold or whether the weather be hot, uh-huh. whatever the weather, we in this together. <laughs> Well, if we like it or not. What? What's the name of the prank again, nephew? Come on. Baby, wait. Oh, oh man. Oh, it's man. just wait. Oh, man. Wait. Baby, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on, sure, cat, he just dog. did his exercises and he come back with the prank and still fight. <laughs> but he sounded like, worse. Yeah. Like, like, oh, oh, man. After the exercise. What else? Come on. Oh, <laughs> Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach uh, Trina, please. Yeah, this is Trina. Hey, uh, Trina, my name is uh, Ernest, Ernest Murphy, down here at the bus barn with the, uh, from the school district. Your son is, is Devin, am I right? Uh, yeah. Okay. No, he's in the is sixth that... grade, I think. I Wait, think is everything rides... okay? Yeah, 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 everything is fine. I think he's on, he rides bus 90, bus 93. Does he ride bus 93? Are you familiar he, yeah. with the bus number? Uh, yeah. I, yeah, he does. Okay. So now the school board has implemented a new rule, and um, we're, we're having to call 
uh, a lot of parents and let them know about the new rule okay. uh, for as far as the buses are concerned. Now, from my understanding, each child that gets on the bus has to weigh less than 125 pounds. That's what the new rule that is imp implemented by the wait, school board. Wait, so, what did you uh, just, wait, wait, can you say that again? I feel like uh, I just missed something. Each, each child that gets on the bus has to weigh less than 125 pounds. I don't understand. I don't understand. Can, can, so well, wait, what's okay, so what, is, what does that mean? So starting on Monday, starting on Monday, what they're going to do is they're going to the, the bus driver will have a scale, and he will weigh the kids what? before they get on on the bus. I, 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 I understand, man. Then, but like I say, I'm calling, I'm calling every parent wait. that they are wait. What the, the f that you they, said you're gonna you're gonna weigh my child before he gets on the bus? That's that's I, what the new rule. That's what the new rule. Is. If it, he's over one twenty five, then he wait, he'll either have to walk wait, or you'll have to take him to school. Wait, you, no. Wait, I have a job, okay? I have a job. I'm not going to take my kid to school. That doesn't. I don't. I, that's what the bus is for. That's what our, my tax dollars pay for. But what right. Is, but, but what's me, the reasoning, me, the rationale behind this? Okay, let me tell you what's going on. From what they're saying uh, okay. is that the the weight of these children is wearing down these transmissions on this bus, on these buses. That the is, transmission, that the is, transmission that cannot that take all of that. that. So. Yeah. They are limiting the weight of each child. Right. So now, how much does that? I think over, that's discrimination. Huh? I think that's discrimination. But is, that, is your son over? Is he over one hundred and twenty-five pounds? He okay. He is. Okay. He's a, he's then, a then, tall then, kid. Then, then you gonna, you probably gonna have to take your son to school, <laughs> or he gonna have to walk. No, he, I, probably, he probably need to walk to school if he already one hundred and twenty-five pounds. That is so rude. <laughs> What the absolute are you talking about? Like, uh, uh, Ma'am, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, if your son is overweight, uh, 125, you know, maybe the exercise are doing good, but like I say, the, the school board is not going to allow him on the bus. But, sir, I I will not accept this. If I, who do I need to call? Is there a manager? Is there a city council member? I mean, this is seriously the most up. Discriminatory practice I've ever heard of. It doesn't even make sense. You're talking okay. about a child. I understand, but we're talking about a child that weighs more than a grown person. You, your son Listen, is a heavy. I need to get. A, what is your name, sir? Tell me your name again. My I'm name writing is this Ernest. Down. My name is Ernest. I'm down here at the bus ball. I would like to speak with a supervisor, like now. Okay. What you, you do not get to speak to my about my child that way. You don't get to speak to any kid that way. You should not be working at a school if that is your attitude. I'm not, I don't work at the school. I work at the bus barn. I'm down here at the bus barn. And they gave me your number. Evidently, they're right. Because you're saying he's over 125 pounds. I, I am in absolute shock. This is so f up to like, Okay. Know. So do you have a fat oh, ass child? I mean, do you have, excuse me, I'm sorry, do you have a big child? Listen, what my child looks like, how much he weighs, is none of your business. I'm going to call the school. They should have been working with your company if this is the way that you treat people. And you talk about children this way? Like, what the f*** is the matter with you? I guess what they're doing is that this is the way of them approaching obesity. You know, let the right. kids yeah, walk to school. Whoever, whoever over 125, let them walk. They might walk it all. Your son might listen, need Listen, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, Okay. I have to work. My son is getting on that g bus, and I'm going to call the school board and should not be working with you. We need another bus company. I don't know, but I'm calling the city. I will call whoever the f they need to call, but you need to give me a supervisor's name right now. Right now. Do you like, think you need to start cooking different so, so Devin don't have, uh, you know, maybe maybe it starts at home with what you feed me. F you. Everybody you know, I am calling your supervisor. I'm calling the, the city. I'm calling the school. I am going to get you so fired. Like, I can't even believe that you're allowed to make this call. Like, are other parents okay with this? Well, you. Well, you. I'm, I'm, I'm calling. When you're on your way to work in the morning, Trina, do you listen to the Steve Harvey morning show? Oh, my God. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> 
Tony. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. Yes, yes, yes. Nephew yes. Your, Tommy. Your, your cousin Vicky got me to prank phone call you, baby. Oh, my God. I'm going to kill her. Yeah. God. I mean, I was like, oh, my God. I love Steve Harvey. I love you. I was about to have a heart attack. Thank God. <laughs> You got to tell me this, baby. Trina, what is the baddest? And I mean the baddest radio show in the land. Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> I like Ooh, you play too much. Harvey. Oh, uh huh. <laughs> Talking about that uh, lady's baby like that. <laughs> but we in here cracking up. All I of know. Us. <laughs> it was funny. All of us with kids. <laughs> <laughs> Scale. 125 pounds, I'm just saying. If, 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 he don't, if he don't make weight on the scale outside that bus, mm-hmm. get to walk with it, you take his butt to school. That's how it works. That's how it works around <laughs> here, okay? Do you Set, think baby. you need to cook differently? Ooh, I would have went off on you. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> lost my mind on you. <laughs> All right, nephew. <laughs> just because you got a fat ass, I mean, excuse me. Oh. Just because your baby is a little old, man, I was hollering. <laughs> Coming up next, it is the Strawberry Letter subject. He got fired, and I'm under new management. Hmm. We'll find out what that's all about right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the Strawberry Letter, and if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com. All you have to do is click submit strawberry letter and we get your letter and we could be reading your letter live on the air just like we're going to read this one right here right now and you never know it could be yours so write us yeah you never know Mm -hmm. buckle up and hold on tight we got it for you here it is strawberry letter Thank you, nephew. Subject, he's fired and I'm under new management. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 41-year-old white lady and I work in corporate America with a very good job. I go to work dressed like a million bucks every day because I had I had help buying my designer pieces. I always start at the top when I date and I've never dated a man that is beneath me. A man isn't even beneath me when we are having sex. I'm always on top in everything I do. I have I have a son, and he he likes the best of everything. I work hard to keep him in a lifestyle that I didn't have growing up. At work, I'm an executive, and I report to the president of the company. I had a private affair with the last president of my company, and he slipped up, and his wife found out about me. She didn't let him know anything. She went straight to the board members of our company, and he was let go. I felt terrible about it, and he wanted to continue the affair, but... It would have put my job in jeopardy. So I moved on and prayed that the gossip wouldn't leak. Nine months later, we have a new interim president and he's black. I love a man in power and he's not all that handsome, but he can dress and he carries himself as though he runs the world. I guess that he hasn't heard the gossip because he has already asked me to go to lunch with him uh, to give him an overview of the day-to-day operations. Could it be that I'm at the executive level and he wants to hear from a manager or is it because he's interested in me? The best part is that he is single and he is the interim president. So legally, we can do anything we want. He said he's picked the perfect place for us to go where we can talk without distractions and he can get to know me. Does this sound like he's coming on to me or is this a professional lunch? (laughs) Okay, really? You already know. You already know what the deal is. He asked you to go out and he's picked the place where you won't be distracted and he can get to know you. That is not lunch. That's a date. Okay. That is a date. And surely you know that. You see that. You are new. You're not new at this dating thing. You're not certainly not new at dating your bosses. I mean, isn't that how it starts? You know, when they ask you to go out like that, that's how it starts, right? So so my question to you is, what is your goal? Do you want to get married eventually? Do you want to be in a relationship? Do you just want to do all the presidents in the company? I mean, wh- what is your goal? Are, you're, you're doing all that you're doing for a reason. You wear designer clothes every day. You have a stylist to pick out your designer pieces. Uh, you've never dated beneath you. You're always on top, you say, even in the bedroom. You sound very confident, 
very self-assured, which is a good thing, of course. No, no self-esteem problems here. But my question still remains, what is your goal? What do you want? Have you just written Steve and I to brag? Uh, or is there a means to the end? I really don't think you would just be putting this much effort into anything if you weren't purpose driven. You just want you just will not come right out and say that that's what you want. You want us to think that you got it all together or you're on top, as you say, but with no end game in mind, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. You want to snag one of these company presidents so you can continue your lifestyle and level up. That's why for sure you are definitely going to go out to lunch with this new guy in hopes that he could be the one that you finally get. Otherwise, why would you even mention that he's single and it's legal? You guys could do whatever you want. Listen, I say enjoy your date with him but when you write us, please be honest about your intentions. You are trying to get a president. That's what it is. Say what it is. Steve? Why are we trying to act like this so now? <laughs> okay. Because I, I ain't in the mood today. What's yeah. Right? She, you don't she feel like playing along. Mm-hmm. Right. She knows you what You know, it is. look, listen, let me stop. This has nothing to do with race. Mm-mm. So let me clear that up. So while I'm giving my answer, this answer would apply to anybody. You made it racial Mm -hmm. because you wanted to let us know you were a 41-year-old white lady. And you wanted to let us know the color of the new interim president. We wouldn't (laughs) have known no different. You could have just said, this is how I am. This is what I do. But you made it racial. I'm just the guy for it. (laughs) You're going to make it racial, Steve. All right, right, all right, let's go. (laughs) 65 years old. Mm -hmm. I'd have seen this movie before. (laughs) So let's go. You want to make it racial and you want to make it what it is. Now, here it is. This letter is about a white gold digger. (laughs) So now here we go. I'm a 41-year-old white lady. I don't know why you thought it was necessary to tell us that, but fine. (laughs) I work in corporate America with a very good job. I go to work dressed like a million bucks every day because I had help buying my designer pieces. I always start at the top when I date. I've never dated a man that is beneath me. A man isn't even beneath me when we having sex. I'm always on top in everything I do. Okay, white lady. <laughs> you better you better explain this, white lady. <laughs> I can't call you by your name that you didn't give us that. Mm-mm. You described yourself as a white lady. Hang on, black man. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> coming back more about the white lady when we come back. That's right. Part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Subject, he got fired and I'm under new management. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter and uh, finish up with your response, okay? Because I'm not in the mood today. I told you I ain't finna play with this one. Uh-uh. So I'm going to call it like it is. This is a letter. It's about a white gold digger. And the reason I'm starting off the letter with this is a white gold digger because this is how the woman started her letter. Dear Steve and Shirley, she's talking both of them. Mm I am a 41-year-old white lady. This ain't even necessary, but if that's what you want to make it about, I'm the guy for you. White lady say, I work in corporate America with a very good job. I go to work dressed like a million bucks every day because I had help buying my designer pieces. Well, we already know what that is. I also start at the top when I date, and I've never dated a man beneath me. A man isn't beneath me even when we're having sex. I'm always on top in everything I do. Okay, white lady. I have a son, and he likes the best of everything, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he do. I work hard to keep him in a lifestyle that I didn't have growing up. And she ain't talking about just working hard at her job. Mm-hmm. She working hard to date from the top mm-hmm. and stay on top. 
at work, I'm an executive, and I report to the president of the company. I had a private affair with the last president of my company. He slipped up, and his wife found out about me. She didn't let him know anything. She went straight to the board members of our company, and he was let go. Now, this, I can assure you, was enough. This a white lady move. The president you were sleeping with was mm-hmm. white. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because... Yeah. The black lady ain't keeping nothing to her damn self. <laughs> and better going talk. to the board. Talk. Oh, no. This finna be a corporate ass whooping on display. Black <laughs> women take it to the house, the parking lot, the, parking the lot. church, <laughs> Not Facebook, the parking lot. <laughs> Facebook Live. Mm-hmm. Instagram, that's right. Her brother, her <laughs> cousins, everybody involved. So I know they was white. Mm-hmm. I felt terrible about it, and he wanted to continue, but continue. Why yeah. would I continue? You ain't on top no more, right? See, she don't date beneath her, but it would have put my job in jeopardy. How would it put your job in jeopardy? He gone now. You didn't get put in jeopardy when he got fired. Mm-hmm. So that's a lie. It wouldn't have put your job in jeopardy, and I'm going to prove it to you. Nine months later, we had a new interim president, and he's black. Okay, you had to tell us that. I love a man in power. Yes, you do, because you're a gold digger. And he's not all that handsome, but he can dress and he carries himself as though he runs the world. A lot of ugly people in charge. <laughs> Trump was in charge. <laughs> Biden is in charge. I'm in charge of this radio show. I ain't all that good looking my damn self, so I get it. But you're rich. But it's you okay. said, but he can dress and he carries himself as though he <laughs> run the world. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now you got this black dude. I guess that he hasn't heard the gossip because he has already asked me to go to lunch with him to give him an overview of the day-to-day operation. Could it be? Here's what she tried to play. Yeah, yeah. Could it be that I'm at the executive level and he wants to hear from a manager? Or is it because he's interested in me? She tried to trick us. (laughs) No, lady, it's you the one that's interested. See, you the one that's interested. And now let me show you something. The best part is he's single and he's the interim president. So legally we can do what we want. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where'd that come from? Because just a minute ago, the reason you would not date the white man after he got fired was because you said it would put your, it would have put my job in jeopardy. How? Mm-hmm. He don't even work there no more. <laughs> he don't even work there no more. <laughs> but now you done figured out that the black dude, since he's single and he the interim president, it's fine. So legally we can do what we want. There is nowhere in a corporate America that you can do what you want. There ain't mm. nowhere you can do what you want. Mm. You want to get some rules, go get a job in corporate America. He said he's picked the perfect place for us to go where we can talk without distraction and he can get to know me. Does this sound like he's coming on to me or is this a professional <laughs> lunch? Heifer, if you don't shut up with this bull crap, you a professional gold digger. You know how to dig for gold. You done already decided the fact that he ain't handsome don't matter. He dresses well and he carries himself like he run the world. And he done got the power. And all you look for is power. You don't date beneath you, girl. You just said all this. Mm-hmm. You know good and hell well what this is. And my question is, which one of them designer dresses you going to wear to this damn lunch? Because your <laughs> ass going to have whatever cleavage you got. And I'm pretty sure you done bought some extra ones with all these mm-hmm. extra dudes you've been dating. You're going to have them shoved up under your throat. <laughs> <laughs> this all was right. your whole intention. You a gold digger. Lady, mm. stop playing. A yeah, black stop. dude, I wish I knew you so I could give you a heads up and tell you what's coming. Mm-hmm. Lord, all right, hit us up. You stupid like most men. <laughs> Thank you, Here's Steve. a clue, though. She will be the woman with her breast mashed up under her chin at the dinner. <laughs> Mashed up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hit us up on Instagram at Steve Harvey <laughs> FM to comment on today's Strawberry Letter. You can also check us out on the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, it is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got for us, Junior? And congratulations. Hey. Hey, congratulations. Thank you very much. Man, thank you to the city of Lithonia. Mayor Shamika Reynolds, I appreciated the proclamation. It was so much fun. But also, I did not know the surprise was going to be the resolution from the state of Georgia. Thank y'all so much for the resolution. Man, it was a great benefit. We had a great time. Cheers Hope Foundation is still working. Thank y'all so much. I enjoyed it. Had a wonderful time. Lifetime cigar. Thank you. Let's get into it, man. Unc, you got to be proud of your boy, man. Deion Sanders. Let's just go ahead. Just prime time. Let's go ahead, man. Prime. Come on, man. Prime out here working, man. Prime. Deion Sanders has donated half of his salary to make sure that the JSU, JSU football facility is completed on time. This boy then gave up half his salary. I'm wow. proud of you, Prime. That's proud prime, of you, man. Wow. You think yeah. HBCUs look good, man. Yes. He is out here working. Thank you, Prime. This boy donated half his salary. I can't give up half my salary for six cents. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not doing it. <laughs> You're not giving up half your salary for what? For, for sick or sale? For Hell sick or sale. Oh, yeah, y'all asked for to be sick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Y'all asked for to be in here. I just want to just, just acknowledge Prime for what he doing. But what your you ass say, Junior? me. Just since you know your half of your salary ain't going to cure this thing. <laughs> now, Junior, yeah. you would give up half your salary if it cured it. If it cured it. But since okay. I know it ain't, oh, For no, some more research. <laughs> Half <Wow>. my salary. <laughs> oh, I just oh, wanted to just show you the difference. The oh, difference is okay. he, he donated for JSU football team. He is committed. Yeah. I'm committed to sickle cell, but not half my salary. I'm not. Thank you, Dion. <laughs> Appreciate you, Prime. Also yeah. in track and field, man, let's give it up for the Woo! women. Four by one. I don't know if y'all saw that. With I them missed girls. it. What happened? Oh, man, they 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 walked Jamaica down. No, 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 no. We could first place in the world championship. Four by 100 relay team, man. 41-14, Tommy, in the four by one. Them girls was moving. I saw the world I records, the this. new girl, the uh, black girl that set the world record in the uh, 400 hurdle. Yeah. Dog, mm-hmm. she ran it in 50.87. Dog, at the height of my track career, I couldn't run that in the 400. Wasn't no damn hurdles out there. <laughs> <laughs> right, let alone stop. Dog, it, wa- it, wasn't, a, it yeah. wasn't a stick out there. <laughs> they didn't even have a branch laying across the track. That girl ran a 50 <laughs> with did. hurdles. This with is hurdles. not about you. <laughs> yeah, Thank you, Junior. Don't you know how fast that is? <laughs> Coming it's up at the though. top of the hour, if you need encouragement to start a business, we've got it for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Rihanna is expanding her massive beauty empire by adding Fenty hair to the brand. Rihanna has filed a trademark for Fenty hair with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Per the filing, some of the products featured in the line will include hair brands, curlers, combs, clips, ribbons, brushes, and most anticipated wigs and extensions. So, Steve, (laughs) many times, yeah, many times, Steve, people have wanted to start businesses but think they can't um, have some type of business because it's been done so many times. Now, if Rihanna had thought like that, she would never have launched Fenty Beauty in the first place and become the billionaire that she is. So any words of encouragement for our wannabe entrepreneurs that are listening? Well, you know, if it's in your imagination, if in your heart is something that you should pursue, you know, it doesn't matter that it's been done before. You you have three ways of making money, a lot of money. You can be the first, you can be the best, or you can be the only. Hmm. Just because first is gone, and just because only is gone, there can be a better way to accomplish it. The first person that made a car, that wasn't the best car. It was the first car and the only car. Uh It was the best car at the time, but somebody improved on that car. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to go within yourself, man. Stop trying to compare yourself. Rihanna know his hair out there already, but Rihanna also know it's only one Rihanna. And some people gonna go with her because it's Rihanna. Some people will go with you if you show yourself to be a better way to get the product, a better way to get the service, a better way to service the people. And then you can make money at it. You know, that's 
you look, if you want to look for reasons why not to start a company, why not to get into business, and why something don't work, you'll be successful at that every time. Uh-huh. It's like when I take a new idea to my team, I had this lady that worked for me. She's a lot better now because she's really, really smart. But every time I took something to this lady, she would tell me why I won't work. Well, Mr. Harvey, this this can happen. I, I got all that. How you think I got here? Right. I was told from the <laughs> get-go it wasn't going to work. I'm a master of it. it ain't going to work. I got that. I brought <laughs> this idea, and your job is to tell me how it can work. Yeah, but I also look, want to present the pros and the cons. I don't need the cons. I already know. You're the first con I done ran into. You keep telling me why it won't work. I'm not interested in that. I want to know how can we make it work. And that's because that's how I approach everything. Well, somebody else is doing this already. And, like, okay, my book came out. You, I ain't had a first book. Right. 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 <laughs> this isn't the first radio show. <laughs> Bro, I didn't have an only, only book on relationship. Yeah. It's... I know. I wrote Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man with a different title and a different aim. That's how it became successful. Mm -hmm. Shirley said it that. This ain't the first radio show, Mm -hmm. but it's it's a damn good one. Oh, yes. (laughs) But it's the only one with us on it. Come on. (laughs) Now, you know. That's what I wanted you to get to, yeah. So, see, don't, don't ever let your ideas get stopped. Mm-hmm. by somebody beating you to the punch. Mm-hmm. Also, let me share another thing with you. No matter how successful something is, somebody still didn't get it. Ron Osley taught this lesson to me. At the time, that was five billion people in the world when we had this conversation. It's eight billion people. This is a long time ago. Five billion people in the world. I said, Ron, all your albums go platinum, man. He said, Steve, that ain't nothing. He said, that's a million people bought that out. I said, man, but that's huge in the record business. He said, you know what that means? That means 4 billion, 999 million people don't give a damn about me. Mm. Oh, man. Mm. I went, I went wow. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you for that wisdom, Steve. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, Byron Allen is the brand new owner of the Black News Channel. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Comedian, businessman, and producer Byron Allen has bought the Black News Channel for $11 million, uh, reviving it from bankruptcy. Uh, Byron Allen already just owns over 27 news stations in the United States, including the Weather Channel. The Black News Channel was launched back in 2020 and shut down in March of this year. Allen says he plans to deliver a best-in-class network for the underserved African-American community and the advertise and the advertisers who want to reach this extremely valuable audience. So thank you to Byron All Allen. Right, yeah, that's Congrats. good. Yeah, you know him, right, Steve? Oh, I've met him before, it, but man. yeah. You know, we're not friends, but we're friendly. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we don't hang yeah. out or nothing, but he's a great dude, man. Yeah. Always been a hustler, man. Brian, Brian Allen has always been that dude. You ever notice, man, you look up on TV, you always see a show, Laugh at Night, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Comics laughing. Unleashed. Comics uh, Unleashed. All this shit right here. He's actually very smart at what he does. Mm-hmm. And he'll take them late night time slots, and he'll own that advertising, and he'll give them guys, them up and comings, or people that mm-hmm. and give them a shot, put them on TV, let them promote their stuff. And he make money, man. That guy's just mm-hmm. always been a hustler and a very, very astute businessman. Mm-hmm. Brian Allen's mm-hmm. very, very bright when it comes to business because he's mm-hmm. always reshaping himself and reinventing himself. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations, and thank you for keeping the Black News Channel alive. All right. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the hour. We'll do a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Would You Rather. Would you rather... Be without your two front teeth, or would you rather be without your eyebrows? Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking about eyebrows. Yeah, hell on. Shake, shake these off. Yeah, I can put some eyebrows on him. What we I not gonna do is have these two damn yeah. teeth missing. In that ain't front, what we finna do. Right up in the front. But would you, 
But would you draw your brows on? And yeah. Draw back? I'll see what I look like without them for a minute, but we're not finna try this without these days. You need... And let's talk about, let's talk about it. We, we, we don't even really use our eyebrows as much. I mean, I ain't surprised that much in life, no way. So. No. <laughs> there may be two oh, extra... What? Two extra mustaches is all that is. I don't need yeah, all that. Yeah, that's though. all that is. I got a mustache. I just yeah. frown a lot and it'll look the same. Yeah. 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 No. All right. Would you rather urinate a little when you laugh or would you rather drool when you speak, when you talk? Oh, no. So no, I'd rather, rather, rather drool when drool I talk. It. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going I'm I'm to go and pee a little bit. I'm no. cool. Yeah, just a little when you laugh. But we laugh a lot on this show. No, I laugh all the time, and I wear a lot of light-colored pants. So we're going to walk away from you. going to be wet. Them stains going to show up? Yeah, now I'm just looking like an old man need a diaper. We ain't going to do that. Thing. No. I can wipe my mouth. You can't wipe that pee off. <laughs> Did you say what? <laughs> All right, here's one for you guys. Would you rather a full head of hair for one month? Oh, are you bringing you... you in this? Hold on, hold on. Oh, my God. Hold Why y'all pull this in there? Hold on, you, oh, you dragged no. Junior ass right on in here. Right on in here. Junior has oh, hair. What you trying to... No, 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 no. You, you know, full head. We're right here. We talking to him. Look, you, if you on the Zoom, look at him right now. Oh, oh my God. Back there with his headset. <laughs> Go ahead. What is it, Shirley? Hey, Julie, you, I didn't even get a chance to finish it. Dang. Would you rather have a full head of hair for a month or would you rather have abs of steel for a month? Abs. Dog, give me them abs. I'm going to take so many damn pictures. Boy, give a damn about no hair. Ooh. You know what I'm going to do for a month? Now, now, the question is, Junior, which one you want? <laughs> It works out. The, the, hair, the hair ain't coming back. I keep holding on for no reason. I'm LTD in here. Hold it on. Dude, I'm looking at you right now, and your hairline is even with your head. Uh, Junior you had happen. some curls, too. Uh, yeah, you going to have to let go a little bit. Sorry, Junior. Has. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get the ass. All right, guys, that's today's round of Would You Rather. Coming up in 49 minutes after the hour, it is our last break of the day, and we'll get some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are, last break on this Monday. It's been a good Monday. Yep, Mm -hmm. new week. Let's do it. It is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is my birthday week. Yes, it is. It's coming. Come on. Yes, it is. Thursday. So let's talk about that. Um, uh, the uh, turn up for her, Junior, is very low. <laughs> you know it, especially now. One time for Matter of fact, you won't even notice the turn up. Uh-uh, you will not. <laughs> Get my hair and nails done. <laughs> That's the turn up? <laughs> yes. All right, Steve. You know, uh, we were talking early, Junior and I. And it led me to want to share this closing remark with you. You know, um, I I try to keep encouraging people because uh, that that was the one thing I did not get a lot of when I was out there struggling and trying to make it. I didn't get a lot of encouragement. Uh, A lot of it was because I was homeless and living in a car and Nobody really knew the dreams, and and I I didn't want to share it with the people that I knew because I knew they wasn't supportive of it. So I, I, and I'm not saying I was alone. God was with me the entire time, even when I wasn't having an active relationship with Him. He just kept His eye on me, you know. He just He just kept kept His eye on me because it could have been far worse, but He just. You know, he he let me wallow in it because these were the decisions I made and these were the consequences I had to face. But he kept his eye on me. I know he did. I know my mama was somewhere praying for me because that's all it could have been. Because as bad as it was, it could have been worse. So I know what it is to need encouragement, and that's the purpose I try to use a lot of my closing remarks for. 
we were talking earlier about starting a business and, uh, you know, how people look for reasons why not to start a business or why not to take a leap of faith or why not to jump or why not to go down there and fill out that application or why not try to climb the corporate ladder. And one of the excuses people use is because somebody already doing it. Well, it's already a skincare line out there. It's a lot of them. It's already a clothing line out there. So what, you ain't going to start your clothing line because Nike out there? Why, why? You, you, you ain't, you're not going to make your eyeglasses because uh, Ray-Ban already done beat you to it? You're not going to design nothing new because somebody done beat you to it? T- get rid of that attitude. Stop looking for reasons why not to and come up with the reasons why you should. The three ways to guarantee yourself of making a lot of money is to be the first, the best, or the only. If you can become one of those, you're successful. But just because you're the first ain't going to mean you the, you the last one and you're the only one going to make money. And just because you're the only one don't mean you're going to remain the only one. And just because you're the best one right now don't mean somebody can't come along and top that. We're in a competitive society today. We're in a society of technology that's moving along. Everything we used to do back when I was younger, they doing it better now, period. Ford was the first person to come out with a car. See, first was good when it was first, and it was the best, and it was the only. But somebody looked at that and said, man, we got we can improve, we can improve on that. Ford ain't the number one car company in the world no more. I don't know what it is, but they might not be the number one car company in the world. But even if they are, it's a lot of car companies out there making money. So stop allowing the fact that something already exists to stop you from doing your version of it. You know, like it all began when they were talking about Rihanna's coming out with this hair. Well, everybody doing hair. Well, they ain't ain't Rihanna. And when you come out with yours, they ain't you. Give yourself some credit. God made you uniquely you. It's only one of you. Of the 8 billion people on planet Earth, not a single one of us have the same fingerprint. God know what he's doing. God knows how to make you uniquely you. You're the only one with this set of fingerprints. But you steady want to put yourself in a group when clearly God made you to stand out. We're going to get to standing. And sometimes you got to put your life together. I've been piecing my life together for years now. Man, why you got so many jobs? Because I'm trying to piece it together, man. Look, I don't have one of them jobs where they pay me $100 million one time, and then I can go sit down, and then I show up again, they pay me another $100 million. I wish I had that, but I don't. So my idea has been to piece it together. Let me give you an example of how pieces really work. When you go to Popeye's Kentucky Chicken Place, and you got a lot of people you're trying to feed, you want to go in there sometime, and you look at a bucket of chicken. And you want the bucket. The, the biggest bucket I've seen is 20 piece. They probably got one bigger than that now. Probably got a family pack or something like that. But you used to get the 20 piece bucket of chicken. But do you know what was in the 20, in the bucket of chicken? It was chicken pieces. It was a little wing, no meat on that one little tip. It was a leg in there, a thigh, it was a breast. It was pieces. Sometimes you got to just go ahead and deal with the pieces to make yourself into a bucket of chicken. What difference do it make? Yeah, I might have pieced my whole career together, but I got a bucket now. Everybody in my family can eat off the bucket of chicken. Quit worrying about everybody else. Put your pieces together and make yourself a bucket of chicken. Go on to the picnic. Have yourself a good time. Those are my closing remarks. I hope you got something. If you didn't see you tomorrow, maybe we'll give you something in. If you don't get nothing in, you don't want nothing.